Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the Mental House. I am your host, Khadija. Wow, this little vlog is going to be a little different. It's almost as I'm, I'm putting out something to encourage each and every one of us and everybody out there. If you have a self-help line in your community, a resource line where you can talk to somebody, I encourage anybody in, to take advantage of that. Uh, in our town, I know we have something like 211, and you can call and you know remain anonymous, and they're very they're very open and not judgmental, and they usually can direct you to resources to um, you know maybe somebody to talk to about your mental health, whatever. I'm just saying, I just realize there are so many people hurting in in the communities that it is just insane. Mental health is really, it should be on the front burner of every candidate running for office. Mental health, free mental health for all Americans. But anyway, I'm saying that to say that, you know, I encountered a young man. I think he told us his, he was 25 and it was myself and a bunch, a few other middle-aged women elderly women, I should say, uh, that he kept attaching himself to, and I was trying to figure out, you know, what is going on here, why does he seem like he wants to say something, and you know, when you get older, especially, and I'm not saying it doesn't happen when you're younger, I'm saying especially when you get older, you know, you you get the wisdom starts to set in, and to the degree where you can tell when a young person is very troubled, you can tell when a young person has something to say, and when they're looking to say it to a person that they feel they can give them words of encouragement or wisdom, or they have that expectation of the person that they're going to give the information to. And this is what I kind of felt about the young man. So as I got up for the last time, I think I went and grabbed a coffee and came back. And he was even closer in our circle. So I said, okay, what's going on with him? Um, and what happened was he asked me, did I hear of a story of a young lady that was shot in her apartment somewhere in I think he said South Houston or East something. And I, I had no idea what he was talking about. And he elaborated a little further and told me that there was a young lady who was shot by her ex-boyfriend's hood rat girlfriend. And she, the, the ex-girlfriend shot through the house and actually killed the new girlfriend who is the mother of a one-year-old child. Oh, God, how tragic. And I said, oh, no. And we said, no, we hadn't heard about that. I, I did. And some, you know, that's terrible. And I'm going to my spiel about how horrible that is, being that y'all see my grandbaby and she's about a year old. I can't imagine. Um, just, you know, it's just dev devastating. You know, her being motherless and on something so ridiculous well he was so hurt and sad and I guess that story just ripped a wound open in him because he said well the same thing happened to me huh he said yeah uh, my ex-girlfriend is you know, she, she, she's uh, gonna she was just sentenced yeah, she was just sentenced to 60 years or something in prison because you know, she killed my girlfriend. And this guy was totally devastated. He was doing everything he could do to hold himself and keep himself together. Um, he 
had to get the information out and I guess he just trusted us older women to hear what our advice would be to him in that situation and it was so pitiful that I I, I just never felt so uh, sad for an individual um, I gave him a big hug because that's first of all that's what he needed and the young man cried and I don't know if this was the first time he cried about it but we hadn't even got to the part where we introduced ourselves yet in the class and uh, the facilitator noticed that um, the young man was very disturbed and so they signaled it's going to be okay and uh, yes he's definitely going to be okay um, and this is maybe something that uh, we can start right now discussing because there's a lot of stuff a lot of hurt going on in this community there are people that are not being validated and even when I hugged the young man it wasn't like he was like Aah. you know but he he, he was emotional and I had never met this person they know him from Adam's Tomcat but he felt compelled to release that information to me and to us and he felt safe enough to allow us to um, you know receive that information and hope that we wouldn't you know just turn our back or be vulnerable or walk away from him he trusted that we would give him some words of comfort uh, because he was so riddled with guilt and I felt so bad for the young man because I tell my nephews and younger brothers young men that I encounter all the time that don't take advantage of women that you are not going to stay with women that you have already decided in your mind where well, I'm just going to use her to do this and just don't because you don't know how people handle stress and you never ever ever want to put yourself in a position where you find out the hard way like he did where his new girlfriend was killed when she was totally oblivious to this sick woman and what her issues were with her or that her issues were long before she got there so mental health is is real is real and we have so many in our community that need that need mental health services so I wanted to sh uh, share that story because it was very very um, disheartening and I, I feel for the young man and um, as we locked arms and prayed with him all I can say is I hope God he, he's allowed to find some peace in his heart after what has happened to him mm. all right that's all I'm gonna say about it if you like what you hear please like and subscribe and I'll see you as a matter of fact I'll see you shortly cuz I got a poem I want to read okay hey if you like what you hear like and subscribe and share